All right, so we're going to be using a technique that's called box modeling, where we start with a polygon cube and just build up from build up resolution from the cube. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take out, turn off my grid in the viewport, and I'm going to switch to my four view. And with the four view selected, I'll go ahead and create a cube. But I'm going to make sure that interactive creation is turned on so that when I drag my box out, I can actually shape and position it in, in line with the reference. So I'm going to use the top view. And I'm going to uh, pull up the, uh, the, from, from the base and kind of squash and stretch the, uh, the shell of the cube into the position. Then with my edge loop tool, we can go ahead and add a first set of edge loops. You can see that I had it set to add multiple edge loops, so um, it created two on the side view. And uh, in the side view is where I'm going to primarily work, so we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, zoom in on this side view here, add a couple more loops here and just sort of get the very first beginnings of the shape of the car put together here. I'm gonna sort of round out the shape nicely without getting too much resolution. Now I probably should wanna switch back to just single edge loops here now, now that I have uh, a generous number of loops going across the box. And this is going to be very boxy because I'm only working in the side view. Uh, so well, it's important to you know, not get caught up in one view for too long. But uh, the tendency for me is to get the shape when it's something like this, get it, get it as, as uh, carved out as possible from the side view and to, before I move on. So let's uh, switch over to x-ray view so we can actually see where the uh, edges, edges should be placed so that we can actually uh, do some operations in the future to sort of start thinking about these uh, openings for the wheels. And similarly with the hood of the car and the windshield and the roof elements. And I want to have edges come to a point so where we can start uh, cutting out those bits. So I'll put another uh, span going uh, vertically down from the front so that I can start lining up the, uh, the elements uh, that, that appear on the edges here, like the door frame window. Maybe I'll do another one uh, sort of to help me out with pulling up the wheel well area here and the bumpers front and back. So the idea is you want to maximize the efficiency of the existing vertices and edges for as long as possible before you actually get into up your model. Now, you can see that I've got just sort of half the model uh, that I'm working with. There's literally no reason to model the entire car because of Maya's great symmetry tools. So what I'm going to do is uh, I've got, looks like I've got symmetry already turned on, so I will flip that off. And now when I select these faces, uh, it should not select faces on the opposite side. I just want to select the inner, inner faces here. And I'm going to actually show you, I, I could just shift select and select all these faces that I want to remove. I could also use this paint selection tool here, which is kind of cool because, you know, you can just go ahead and Go ahead and uh, paint over the faces without catching any of the faces on the opposite side. So as long as the brush is lined up uh, with those faces, it will 
it will work like a paintbrush. So now I've got those faces all selected. I'm just going to hit the delete key and remove them. So now you can see that I've got a opening for the inner hull of the car. Now if I switch to my front view, I can actually start to line up the half of the car that I'm going to mirror to the opposite side. So there's really, uh, like I said, no reason to model the entire vehicle or the entire project if it's something symmetrical like a car um, on both sides in, in a modeling program like Maya that gives you uh, mirroring and symmetry tools. But I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Let's just get a few more of these uh, vertices lined up so that the shape is less boxy and you can actually snap those inner vertices right to the center grid line by holding down X. You see it snaps to all the grid lines at once when you have them uh, multi have multiple vertices selected. Uh, it looks like I probably want to crack this edge here that's not really terminating to anywhere, so we'll need that to work with anyway. And you can use the scale tool to unify edges like that. And you know, make sure that edges that are close together are actually doing something. In this case, I want to push these in so that uh, you know, they're not bumped up against each other. We'll leave the mesh contained at this point, uh, not worrying about the, uh, the wheel wells and the underside of the car. I'm just kind of looking for kind of like a, like a wood cutout version. So let's go ahead and uh, mirror the shell of this car uh, as an instance to the other side. But before we do that, we got to make sure that the pivot point of the object is actually aligned to the grid. So if I hold down D, press D, and shift, uh, shift the uh, manipulator, snap it to the grid, you can see if turn it on, that it is actually now uh, with the center pivot at the scene origin. And I want to go ahead and uh, make sure that uh, my model is set to mirror in the negative X, and it is, and voila. So uh, that we mirrored it as an instance, not a copy, so that when I select a component on one side, it will mirror over uh, and, and any any uh, type of action, whether it's a uh, adding an edge loop or moving vertices and edges around, uh, will immediately be picked up on the opposite side. Uh, see, as you can see, as I'm showing you here. So basically, we're only having to deal with one side at a time. And likewise, if you model on the negative x, it will pick up on the positive x. So you don't actually have to stay working only on one side. Um, so we're starting to shape up nicely here. So I will probably want to save this out at this point as the kind of the blocking stage. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, a couple things here. I'll make sure that we haven't pushed or messed up anything in our side view. Looks like looks like it's not fully uh, correct in the front view, but that might be uh, that might be just because of the reference. But you can see that the 
hood and such aren't exactly uh, rounded and there's some elements that are rounding towards the back of the car that we're going to need to actually uh, factor into our modeling. Same, same goes with the front. We have to just sort of determine, since we're only going to have 3,000 polys, what's going to be texture versus what's going to actually be modeled. So let's go ahead and uh, save it out as, call it scene two blocking. And on our next part of the tutorial, we'll go ahead and continue modeling this car. We'll, uh, sh I'll show you some different ways you can address your wheels and as well as the, uh, this, the recesses for where the wheels are going to go and the smaller elements like the windshield or the rear view side mirrors and the spoiler